Hello everyone. This is basic of C sharp part two. If you have not watched part one, you can go back to my channel and watch it. So in this class, what you're going to cover are variables and constants, naming conversions, and data type. So a variable is simply a name you give to a computer memory location in order to store data in a program. So a constant, let's say a constant is a special type of a variable in which its value cannot be changed in a program. A good example is, is a pi. Is for example, when you want to initialize a pi. So to declare a variable, you start by the data type, then followed by this identifier. That's the name you give to that data type. Then you, you put by the closing, you close by the semicolon, then you can go ahead and assign it to a value. So to initialize a constant, you start by the keyword const, then the data type, then the identifier, then you assign it to a value. So we have uh, different uh, uh, rules in uh, defining your defining your variables. For example, say int, so you cannot start with one, let's say a number, test so this will be able to get an error so instead you can use one also you cannot use uh, white spaces for example that will be able to get an error also uh, prevent use of keywords let's say Let's say if you say a keyword, let's say bull. So this is a keyword. Also, uh, use a meaningful word. Like let's say, don't say, don't say uh, maybe city name. City name so better to use meaningful word. So you just have. The word itself, city. So we have different uh, naming conversions. Also, how you assign a variable. So, camel case, the first word, uh, the first word is a uh, small, start with a small letter. Then the following words are start with a capital letter. So, uh, this uh, most of used to us to declare a variable. For Pascal case, a board name start with a capital letter. It is normally used for to declare a constant. Hungary notation, where you start with the data type, then follow the, with the name of that variable. So this is the old way of naming. So this will not look good in the code. So it's advisable not to use uh, this one. So in data type, we have two types of data types. We have primitive data primitive types and non-primitive type. So primitive type are predefined data types, such we have bytes, boolean, int, uh, double, non-primitive are user-defined data types such as string, array, class. So uh, non-primitive be able to look on a letter, letter classes. So for primitive type we have many, we have, have various uh, primitive types. I mean primitive text, so you can go to Google and be able to search uh, if you want to explore. But as you are going to use or as you're going to code, you're going to interact with various types. So uh, for this, we have C sharp and .NET type. So when you combine, for example, for bool, which is a boolean, when you convert to .NET type is a boolean. So I have categorized so for the integers we have four types we have uh, byte which uh, when you compile in c sharp is in .NET is byte with capital and there's only one byte with the value range from 0 to 55 we have short which are two bytes have int which are four bytes and long which is eight bytes so the more the byte the, the larger the value that can be stored on that data type for real numbers, we have 
uh, three types. So we have float, which in .NET is single and it's have uh, four bytes. We have double in .NET is double and have eight bytes. We have decimal. Uh, you realize it's a sharp type. Uh, normally start with small, small letter. Then .NET is a capital. Then sixteen byte. Also the same. The more byte it has, the more the the larger uh, value it can be able, the larger number can be able to store that data type. So next we have uh, character. So character C sharp we have uh, car two bytes then boolean which uh, the value is either true or false. So we have type of conversion. We have uh, implicit type conversion. Uh, here is where we'll be able to convert uh, normally this have no data loss. We have explicit type conversion, which is also called casting. Uh, here, there's a uh, probability of having a data loss. We have non compatible type of conversion where we use convert class or pass method. So, in our code for the implicit type conversion, so let's say you have a byte, byte yeah, is equal to one. Then you want to convert it to an integer. So you have your int, you define your int b, then the value of a byte, you assign it to an int. So in this case, you have successfully converted a byte to an int. This is what is called this is a implicit conversion. conversion. So when you Display on the screen, display on the console. So, console dot right line, then display the value of our byte. So, so, let's display the value of our of our int. So, you see the value of a byte was one. So, this one you have reassign it to an int, convert it to an int. So when you control the 5 to run, so you'll be able to see the value, the value has been displayed for the byte and for the int. So as I've explained this normally, there's no data loss. The reason being uh, here you have uh, the smaller the, the byte is lower than the int, so meaning uh, the range of value the byte can, st can be able to store is able to, to store in an int. So for explicit type of conversion, so uh, for example, you have an int, int a, then it's assigned to a value 1, so I want to convert an int to a byte. So as you see, this uh, this in some instant will not will not make sense or will not be possible because uh, an int store a uh, larger value compared to a byte. So for byte b is equal to f. So even though one is within the range of a byte, but still giving an error. So to solve this. We use a class convert. Uh, I mean, that's not convert. You cast with casting. So you put a bracket, then the byte, then the value in which you have to convert. So this we have successfully converted. So in your console, the right line, so you have the value. So, so also be able to see the value has been displayed. So in a case, for example, our value of int was higher than the range of a byte. Let's say 1000. So also not get an error when you try and run 
to be able to get a different value for a byte. So this means there's some data that has lost. So a byte cannot store value more than 2 to 55. So this is what is called explicit conversion. So another scenario, we can have a string. A string, let's say a number is equal to then just give it a number. Give it a, so this is a string. So what is in C sharp? What is inside the inside the double quote? It's a string. So in this case, you want to convert to a int. So when you try int, let's say a is equal to, even if you try to cast, so let's say int, then, then we say, we say, call that, we call that uh, variable here, we're getting an error. So these are an example of two types which are not convert and compatible. So to convert non-compatible type, we use a class convert. So use a class convert to so it depends we we'll call it a method. We depend uh, with the data type we want to convert to. So here is an int. For example, if you want to convert uh Maybe this uh, this int is in thirty two, so to convert dot to in thirty two. Let us say that print print. Then inside the parameter, put that variable. So here you have successfully convert a string to a byte by using a class a class convert. So in this, let's display the screen. So we have console dot right line. Then this display our string and also let's display our int so let's see the results control the five so we'll be able to see uh, the value of a string is displayed and also the value the same as the value of an integer so other way to convert use a method pass so in that Dot data type then dot pass then inside it parameter call that variables so also the same it's the same results okay so we can take a case like maybe you want to convert to a byte what will happen so this these are these are larger value that than a byte can be able to store. So let's take byte b is equal to we use convert. We have converted successfully to byte. Then we call that number here. So then we write the on the console the value for byte so what will happen in this case because remember this if you've converted this is like 54,202 which is more than the range a byte can be able to stop so let's see the results so here your program will be able to crash and give 
and exemption. Yes. So to prevent your code from crashing or your program, you normally use a try catch, try catch block. So you have try. Okay. So inside try, you put the code that you're running. So here you catch exemption. So exemption is a way is a way to, to to capture error in a code. So in this, if you want if you want to customize your error, also you can write something on console console right line then then we put so you customize your uh, so you put string value cannot cannot be converted I will just say the value cannot be converted without. So if you want to customize, so it's, it depends on how you want to your user to be able to see the error. So in control five check have errors have here type on expected okay can try and run so here instead of the program crashing you get this customized uh, error. Thank you guys for watching. Let's meet in the other class.